said in my speech that um, having the support of the critics almost feels like getting approval from your parents. You try your best not to need or want it, but when you do get it, it does feel really, really good. Well, playing Blanche Dubois was an unexpected adventure. I didn't see myself ever playing that role the whole of my life. So in terms of what's next after Blanche, um, I've learned from this experience that I do not know what's good for me and I do not know what the, you know, having set dreams sometimes limits you. So I think the, the moral of the story is just be open-minded and be prepared to say yes, even in the scariest of circumstances. It means, it means a lot. I mean, the, the critics don't have any sort of ulterior motive about things. They are just simply talking about what they've seen and they see more theatre than most actors, I think. You know, we were, we, were, we were rehearsing Othello while we were performing Blues in the evening, so I was doing both at the same time. Um, and in a way it was actually quite useful to have both of them balanced because Othello is, is, is very, very, very intense. We were doing that in rehearsals during the day and then I'd leave at five and then I'd go and warm up for Blues and then I could end the day on the energy and the spirit of what Guy was. So actually it was... It was um, I was glad that they were helping each other out as characters. Oh my gosh, um, it feels unbelievably special. I really, I really, really feel elated. I have such huge respect for the Critics Circle. Um, yeah, this is this is a really, really unparalleled day. I'm, I'm over the moon. <laughs> Ooh, oh, that's, that's a great question. I mean, I would love. There's so many, so many dream roles, it's so hard to narrow them down, truthfully. Um, but I would love to get my teeth into some Shakespeare. There's some just incredible, wonderful, complex, formidable women in Shakespeare and I would love to, love to dive in there. I'm Griselda York and I am the executive producer of the Royal Shakespeare Company and it's my huge honour today to be collecting an award on behalf of Arthur Hughes, who played Richard III in our recent production. Arthur is the first disabled actor to have played that role at the Royal Shakespeare Company. He is the most extraordinarily talented young man. Um, he spoke very movingly about what he brought to the part with his own lived experience. Um, and it was an outstanding production. I feel so proud and pleased for him that it's been recognised in this way today. It's in I was gonna say insane. It's amazing. It, it means so much to see that the work's been recognised like this. Like blues was one of the most special things I've ever done. So to see that the critics love it as well is really special. I think for me, blues was a very spiritual experience, and I feel like um, the story that we were telling was, you know, it was kind of like led by our ancestors, um, and I think that's why we bonded so much as a as a company. So um, yeah, it's it's really up there for me. It's um, very flattering to get a, uh, an award from the Critics Circle. Um, they're people that see far more theatre than I could possibly ever. Um, so they really know what they're talking about, so it, it's very flattering. Um, yeah, I'm really honoured. I love going back to the same project and, um, and I like revivals for that and I like coming back to things because we can tweak and we can alter. And yeah, if you saw it before, then there, there are a few changes uh, that we're making at the moment. Um, I won't say what, but there's a couple of sequences we wanted to um, improve on and, you know, make better. So this year, the Critics Circle have uh, named an award uh, in the memory and legacy of Peter Brook, and I'm delighted as Artistic Director of New Diorama Theatre that New Diorama is its inaugural winner. The significance for having the Critics Circle on my side is, as mentioned before, they go and see a lot of work and a variety of work and to have chosen me out of a selection of brilliant plays because I've also seen a lot of theatre this year. The plays have been incredible, so to have chosen me, it feels incredibly rewarding, reassuring, and a great step for me to bounce off of for the rest of my career. So to summarise Red Pitch in a couple of sentences, I would say it's a play about friendship with uh, the ever-looming presence of gentrification, forward slash regeneration, depending on um, what side of the fence that you're sitting on in that debate. It's told through the lens of three 16-year-old friends, 16-year-old male friends, on, um, it's all set on their beloved football pitch, which is called Red Pitch. They see everything. They see everything. They're extremely well um, um, briefed on their knowledge of, of the theatre, of, of the history of each piece, as they said earlier, uh, is, um, is, is really, really deep and so they know what they're talking about. <laughs> yeah, you know, I mean, this production sort of 
in some ways I would almost say owes its life to critics because when we first did it in the woods at Bard College in 2015, Ben Brantley at the New York Times saw it because he happened to be nearby and he reviewed it and gave us the kind of review that makes people want to know if it has a future. So I think it feels really lovely to sort of have a full circle moment. Well, it, obviously it's important to have, I mean, it's lovely to have any support. Um, and, uh, you know, the critics, you opening, opening a play is a nerve shredding experience. And, um, of course, you, you know, of course it's so much nicer if the critics support you. I mean, you know, it's, it's like your baby. There are a lot of different opinions about who Vladimir Putin was, when he changed, and when he became the man that we now know he is. Um, and this, even though this plays like a, a Putin origin story, it is also very much the story of a man who you know, had risen to the very top of Russian society in the, in the chaos of the fall of the Soviet Union. And, and so here are these two titans um, with, a, with an unlikely friendship that came out of it. And uh, that turned into an enmity, a murderous enmity. And um, that's just heaven for a playwright. First question, how does it feel to be the MVP of the National Theatre? <laughs> I wouldn't say that. It feels good. <laughs> yeah, having that phone on, actually, um, I look back to the text exchange that I had with the director, Rebecca, before she was before I knew she was going to ask me to, to, to take over from for, to play Blanche Dubois. And um, it's sort of a, it's a hilarious text exchange where I, I, couldn't, I got crossed wires and I thought she was asking me if I was free for a dinner that night, when actually she was asking me if I was free generally for work, and, <laughs> because she was about to ask me to take over the role.